Okay, so the first demo I'm going to uh, is, do is um, dev mode. So as I said, what dev mode does is it helps you rapidly develop uh, applications or make changes to your applications. So I'm going to start, I've got a I've got an application I'm going to use in dev mode, but I'm also going to show deploying it into Kubernetes. And because this is a modernization uh, session, um, I've picked a stateful application. Um, so this is an application. It has session state, transaction state. Um, and so it's going to use behind, behind the scenes Hazelcast to do session replication. But when I deploy it into Kube, I'll also show how to do session affinity and so on. And it has um, has volumes or persistent storage for storing transaction logs and so on. So what I'll do is I'll start this uh, in dev mode. Uh, and so you'll see that we'll we'll essentially make sure the container is up to date. We'll run that run that container in dev mode. And short, shortly you'll see that the server will start up. Hopefully this is uh, big enough for you to see. Okay, so that's that's all running. Uh, this is just some uh, Hazelcast errors that uh, don't actually affect the execution. Okay, so here we go. Uh, so let's have a look at a quick look at the the application itself. Um, so I'll just refresh the browser. So this is a it's a shopping cart example, uh, and what we can do is um, use the shopping cart to. Um, so I can add add items to the shopping cart. This is just using the Open API UI for a REST service. So if I try it out, I can add something. Let's add cheese at one dollar twenty, and we can see that um, it's it's added the item to the shopping cart. And I can also query the shopping cart, and we can see we've got the results back. So what I'd like to do now is make a change to that application. And so what I'm going to do is all, all I'm going to do is change the uh, the path. So rather than it be so, let me just show you the path. Rather than it be shopping slash uh, slash shopping slash cart, I just want it to be cart. So I'm going to take take away the shopping part of the path, and we'll see that Dev Mode has picked up that change. So if I go back to the browser and refresh, you can see the change is is already there. Uh, and I can I could make requests, but in the interest of time, I won't do that. So you can see that I made a change to the code. The code was compiled behind the scenes and reflected inside the running container. Um, and it all happened pretty much instantaneously. It's actually quite difficult to refresh the browser before the, the change has, has come into effect. OK, so I'll get rid of that particular example. OK. So what, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to deploy into uh, into the Kubernetes environment. Um, so if I just show you, oops, show you the images I've got. I've got one that's pre-built, um, so pre-built 29 hours ago. So I'm going to deploy this this application. Um, and if I look at um, look at what I've got running in my environment, so this is just Docker Desktop. Uh, with the Kubernetes that's built into Docker Desktop running. And we see I've got, I've installed Nginx because I'm going to use that for egress. So that's going to give me the session affinity when I configure it. And I've got the Liberty operator. So the Liberty operator is going to help me with the deployment of my application. So what I've got is I've, I've actually got a comparison of two, two deployment approaches. The first one is just using the kind of straight Kube uh, kube configuration approach, and the second one is using the operator. So if we look at the, the straight kube configuration approach, we can see I want to deploy a stateful set. I've got some annotations that are going to tell me what product is is inside that uh, inside the pod. This is if you need to do license tracking. I want three replicas. I need some storage for my transactions, and and I'm kind of mounting where I want the transaction uh, logs to be to be stored from within the container. Um, and I'm going to expose it on a, a node port, although I'm not going to actually use the node port because I've got an additional configuration which configures Nginx to do um, session affinity, um, and that's going to be available on localhost. Um, but also, I need to configure the persistence. So I've got a persistence, sorry, persistent volume and a persistent volume claim, which are configured for storing the transaction logs. So there's about, uh, I think I counted it up, there's about three screens worth of, of configuration there. 
If we now have a look at the equivalent for the operator, which is slightly just over a screen, but has, has, has kind of comments in there, this is the equivalent. So I've, I'm going to deploy an Open Liberty app application. These are the annotations I want to deploy to say that it's a WebSphere, a WebSphere application server licensed deployment. Um, I want three replicas again. I'm going to um, expose this um, and uh, I want Nginx uh, to give me session affinity. And then for all of that persistent volume storage, et cetera, I just need these three lines to configure that. Okay, now I've got an example that doesn't actually do the, the Nginx um, uh, session affinity because I, I just want to kind of demonstrate um, that from the start. So I'll let me apply the first one. So I'm just copying off a thing just to save you watching me type and make lots of typos. And we can see that the pods are starting up. The first one's already running. Um, the next one's being created. Um, so second one's running. And in a second, we'll see the third one is running. There we go. So we've now got three instances running. So we can see that we've got the three three pods running. We've got uh, service configuration, et cetera. If I do, um, what is it? I want to see the ingress. We can see I've got ingress configured. OK. Uh, oh, and I can also, uh, we can see the persistent volumes that it's created and the persistent volume claims uh, that it's created. So now I'll fire a request at that thing. And we'll add something to the shopping cart. So we've added, what is it, flying saucers at $2.34. Uh, and we've you'll notice that I had minus minus cookie jar cookies. So I'm going to store the cookie that came back. So I can now fire subsequent requests um, to this particular instance, uh, or to this deployment, I should say. And what we'll see is actually, um, it's essentially fairly random in terms of which instance it's picked. But because I've got um, Hazelcast as, a, as the uh, in-memory session replication, I'm getting back the cart. It doesn't matter which instance I hit. Um, but maybe I actually what I want is to have session affinity. So I'll apply an update, um, which is going to add session affinity. Um, and now I can do the same. 10 requests, and we'll see that they actually got routed to the same instance. So I could, uh, for example, oops, kill that instance off. This, this takes a little bit of time just because it's shutting down the container. And then if I fire the request back at it, we'll see I'm getting rooted to a different instance, but my session state's all fine because I was actually, it's it's still in Hazelcast. Okay, um, so that's all I had in terms of demos. Uh, and then last thing I've got is just some references um, to Liberty Material. Um, you may want to screen capture this. We've got lots of uh, reading material for kind of the six reasons, but also how to choose a Java runtime that's appropriate for your needs. Um, information on approaches to Java modernization um, uh, or modernization of enterprise Java applications. There are some things to watch on, on um, our expert TV channels. Um, and also, you can try things out firsthand. So if you go to Open Liberty IO, we have a number of guides that help you try things out. Um, also, so we've got a specific, I've called out the getting started guide, but also um, the, the um, container guide, which also demonstrates how to use dev mode in containers. Um, so I'll hand over to uh, John now.